Ander Belu recently said that uh, there are more bad people than good people. Do you agree with that or not? Once you get income out of the way, it's about serving and contribution to others. You knock on doors with your team, you see another company. What's your reaction? If you're a salesman and you have a sales team, you should understand that they go a wrong way, take a right, left turn, and I feel responsible. The biggest lesson you have learned this year? The insurance referral people are gaining a lot of momentum. The biggest mistake sales people make? If you're not responsible and disciplined, don't do it. Ben Minchaka 2.0, about a year ago, over a year ago, I first interviewed Ben. The story behind that interview is um, randomly called the guy and say, you should come to my studio for the interview. He literally walked in, he, he was here. At that time was my competitor. I still was uh, owner of my roofing company, Stormwood Roofing. He was literally door knocking for another company. He came in, we did the interview, and this is the follow-up. How one video can change your life. How did it change your life? How, what kind of year did you have, my man? How you doing? Thank you so much, Dimitri, man. I cannot, let me just get this out of the way. And I say it everywhere I go, people know me from the video that we did together. And I really want to say, man, I can't thank you enough because it did change my life. Um, coming in last year, um, you know, coming in off the road, coming in off door knocking. I had my, my work shirt on. I was working and then we decided to make some content. After that video hit, hit, the, hit live, I just kept getting in, in, inboxes, messages or whatever, how it, you inspired me. You go get it, like just all these great positive affirmations and, and comments, but. Share one story, like one, one of the craziest feedback you got. On well, that. I'll just tell you, we just shared it. I'm still getting them to this day. You figure a video goes, you'll have your high time and then it'll fade out, right? And I, honestly, I wasn't thinking, I didn't think anything of it when we did the content. What I learned is that video impacted so many people. In fact, I just had a call this weekend a uh, woman from Florida called me up and said, hey, you know, I couldn't afford, I could never afford, I'm a single mom, I could never afford sending my, my child, you know, my son to college, but I want to have you train him in door to door because I know it'll be more beneficial to him than college. How much do you charge? I would really like that. And I was just blown away, man, because I went to college I dropped out out of three years, ran out of money, wasn't really ready for college. So I understand like how people think and it's a big deal. So when they trust me with their family, it put their financial future in my hands. It was really touching. And I get those all the time from China, from England, from everywhere. As you can, everywhere, I get them every day about people thinking, hey, you inspire me. Thanks for, uh, I owe you a steak dinner. You, one of your tips helped me land this job. Like I gave so much value in that video that I still get talked about it today. People inbox me about it. Awesome. And that's what I absolutely love about YouTube. Back in the day, they used to have the slogan, broadcast yourself. This, if you understand YouTube, you can make one video, you can share your story with the world, broadcast yourself, and you never know what's gonna happen. It changed my life changes people's life and for those of you who don't know our studio is always open to good people uh, we don't charge for our interviews you guys can reach out to me if you have you know you've seen interviews like lawyers Chad Wilson John Howe telling it's not pay to play you can reach out to us uh, it's Monday morning we're filming this interview he just walked in my studio is always ready to film good content you just have to be authentic you have to uh, provide real value to the community and we will give you stage to do so. Besides side gigs, what did you do in sales? What are you planning to do in sales this year? How much you personally have sold? Rufi. Okay, so I didn't have that great a year. I was doing uh, trainings, consultings, flyings everywhere till about June. I actually started selling in June and uh, my sales are gonna be a million dollars. I'll hit a million. I'm at half a million. I'm on third place on the leaderboard which is surprising to me, but we had one guy had an astronomical year, $3 million year wow. in Iowa, fantastic leader. And I'm so proud of seeing his growth and development, but a million dollars I'll hit this year. 
Personally. Personally. But you also trained a lot of other people and you've been involved. Yeah, I've been training and recruiting. That was my focus this year, okay? So I went into it mentally as, okay, I can do these sort of numbers. Been doing it for the last couple of years. Now, how can I lead, train, develop, duplicate myself and others? That's a challenge. That's a leadership question. I'm finding out what kind of level of leader I am. And trust me, I found out this year I've got some work to do. Biggest lesson you have learned this year? You know, last time we were on, I said that anybody can do this. I think I found out this year that not everybody can do this. Who cannot sell it with? People say, people say that they want something, right? But we'll be careful what you want because that's going to require commitment and focus and effort and mass dedication. And I can't stress this enough to hit some upper levels in this industry, in any industry. It takes massive effort and focus, and you got to block out the distractions. The harder part of that this year, also learning about, I had a lot of distractions because I'm not just selling roofs for a company anymore. I'm doing other things, so blocking that out. So I learned that not everyone could do this. It takes a certain individual to do that, coachable, burning desire to change their life, and just somebody who is just um, willing to go out there every day and do the activity and not get distracted by life. You're helping others, uh, you're teaching others. How does it help you in your everyday life? I know when I start teaching, it's just something when you teach others, you have to first um, teach you, you become better. How did your life change? Because up until this year, you were not involved in others. How did it change you? How can you describe that experience? It's a really hard feeling to describe and I, we knew talk about it, but when you help other people, here's the thing. When I was uh, 2010, 2011, I got into network marketing, personal development. I start learning about me. Like I said, if I didn't, my, my, if I didn't grow, my income couldn't grow. And I start, it was about income. Then once you get income out of the way, it's about serving and um, contr contribution to others. When you contribute to other success and you see the light in their eyes and how the, the, the light switched and you were able to facilitate that, I can't describe the feeling inside that, that goes off in you. It's like money's great, but it'll come when you provide value, but, but significance and contribution. Once you see that and you get the texts, you get the DMs, you get the voicemails, the phone calls, it really touches you internally. And I don't really know how to describe, but it really makes me proud because all the heartache and, 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 resistance I went through. I didn't know why I was reading all these books. I didn't know why I was attending these conventions and meetings to better myself. But now you know that there's a plan for you later that I use all that now and it's automatic. And it's not like, what do I say? You know, don't compare your 20th, my 20th chapter to your first chapter because you don't know all the stuff that I put in before. So the contribution part is amazing. I'm not here to hear myself talk, man. If I wasn't helping people and didn't get the positive feedback, then it would be totally different. But I'm just, I can't describe that warm and great feeling. It feels like you're serving mankind, like, you know, like instead of yourself, we are selfish people by nature, right? But you, when you serve others, you pour into them and then they pour to another. One candle lights another and it becomes way more bigger than you. Like the video, it's just amazing. Uh, Hunter Belu recently said that uh, there are more bad people than good people. Do you agree with that or not? He made a big post and was kind of controversial. Is there a, so I guess the question is, is there more bad people or good people in the roofing industry? Oh, in the roofing industry? I thought you were going to say in general. Uh, roofing industry, I think like anything else, bad sells, controversy sells. So I think that's the, the, how it gets magnetized. Um, I believe there's... From what I've seen, I've been to all these events the past year. I've made it a mission to go to all these conventions because I'd never had the time before. I've generally met some wonderful, great, genuine, hardworking people, blue collar businessmen, owners. Um, I've met some incredible people and I think most people are inherently good. I mean, for instance, dude, what kind of people go to these, spend all their money to play for the tickets, buy the airfare? stay at the hotel, they're there to improve themselves and their lives and their families and to leave a bigger, bigger legacy for their family. So I inherently think most people are good, but we, the industry loves the controversy and focuses on the bad. It's, you know. But, but even with that is, you know, 
let's say a RoofCon or Roofing Process Conference or even IRE, it's still a couple thousand people out of hundreds of thousands of people. It's still very small. No, you're right. You're right. You're right. I don't, yeah, I guess you're right. I mean, I just, I'd like to believe, maybe I'm naive, but I like to believe in the, in the best of people, look at the best in people because someone looked at, saw the best of me before I saw it. And so I try to help that people out with that and see the best in people. I, I have nothing but positive feedback for people. I mean, even the haters or whatever I got, it doesn't matter. Do you ever notice that? Like, I'm sure your haters, they don't, you don't care because you're doing so much better for man you know for your for your man kind like you're helping people you're contributing to other people you look at all the resources you give people that most people don't have access to that feeling over overwhelms the, the haters haters usually are less successful people too yes. like you will not have haters from more successful than you they're usually less successful and that's how i look at it. you look at some losers who just who never i mean they, they can question your intentions they're just mad they have a sad life. I mean, does bother sometimes? Depends who's hating on you, but usually hate's coming from people who, well, yeah. who did not reach your level. We're human beings, so things affect us no matter what we say. You know, I was, uh, and that's another thing I learned this year about recruiting people, developing them, or trying to develop them. They go a wrong way, take a right, left turn, and I feel responsible. I, I had, I went through that stage in the beginning where, well, this guy didn't last. This guy was supposed to be this and that. Now it looks bad on me, but really I learned that, hey man, all I can do is open the door and people make their own decisions and they, they take their own actions. All I can do is give them the opportunity to come and join the squad and do big things, but yeah. You, you said that um, this year you learned that sales is not for everyone. What happened? Did you lose a lot of people who should not be in sales? Like what changed your mind? The thing that not everybody can sell the roof. Um, there were some high performers that I recruited that were, I'm this, I'm that. I did this this year. And they did. Um, but for some reason, you know, companies have their own culture and their own way of doing things. And if you're not with that culture, you're not going to make it. So that's the main thing I learned too is like, we have a certain culture where we all knock. We all are a team. And if you are a lone wolf, you probably won't be with us. It's just our culture. You want to be a lone wolf? Go find the lone wolf culture in another company. But I notice that people um, aren't, some, some top producers aren't coachable. That's what I learned. And if you're not coachable and do it all for the team, then it just doesn't work. So. I guess what I'm trying to say. But uh, some people would say, and a lot of business owners compromise that they say, well, as long as you bring, let's say you have a top producer who produces four, uh, makes, um, who sells $4 million a year. Many business owners close eyes on personality, close eyes uh, on psychos. Like as long as they bring checks and folders, they forgive them all their shortcomings. Um, you wouldn't, you would not accept that. Here's the thing. I have been one of them guys where I push, produce a lot of numbers. My jobs got built faster, um, you know, and I had certain perks that were overlooked. So I get that. It's part of the, the, our, the roofing culture. Bring in a bunch of money. Yeah, like your sins are forgiven or whatever. But, um, you know, do I agree with it? It just is what it is, right? But for me personally, like it doesn't matter... I know for me, if I was to do something stupid and negative and just totally wrong, that my company, and if it affected their brand, then I would not be there. So you know what I'm saying? So if it affects the brand, then you got to go. But you still didn't answer the question, what made you uh, realize that not everybody can sell the roof? Who cannot make it in sales? Well, here's the thing. There's a start and a finish to a sale. There's, there's a, there's a, a, a sale, there's a close, you, you have to close. You can't just get on the roof, call on the claim, you know, do the uh, adjustment. You have to do the color select. You have to pick up the check. If you don't pick up the check, it doesn't matter how many deals you ink. And so I could see people get into first gear, second gear, but a lot of people do not have, they can't bring in the check. And 
the bottom line is the reason I'm in this spot today is that I have a history of bringing in checks. And that is a skill set. Closing is a skill set. You have to set the intention on the front so it's less resistance on the back. But if you do it right, there is less resistance. But if you don't set it in the front, then you're going to explain all the stuff you should have did in the first beginning. And it extends the close. Any, any time, more time between a sale is never good for a close. What kind of hate guy like you are getting? I know like even in our interviews, we you've seen negative comments uh even yesterday uh someone commented that both of us should not have full-time jobs or we're unemployable or some crap like that uh what kind of hate uh were you getting and how do you react to it um the hate that i get is like most of it is um i'm a grant cardone fan right that's how i you know this about me yep. So Grant Cardone says money requires attention. I don't argue with a guy who makes how many millions of dollars. I just follow what the successful people tell me. So if money requires attention and he tells me to post every hour, then I'm going to post every hour and, and I'm not going to listen to people who don't have my results. People take that as normal people outside looking in or even within our industries like, oh, this guy posts too much. He wants attention whore, you know, this and that. But attention is money. Now, it's currency nowadays. And people that don't realize that are getting left in the dust. So as a, I do it as a business practice. But people say, like, I, I, I post too much. I want attention. Or, oh, this guy's only sold a million or this much. I've sold this much. Why am I not up there? A guy came up to me at one of these events. He's like, how can I be like you? I've sold more than you and I want to do this and this. I go, well, do you want to put yourself out there? That's not everybody can put their stuff out there like I do. You become a target too. You become a, you open yourself for everything, but I don't mind it. It's just I, the little hate. I very, I get a lot of love. I very, get very little hate, but the hate I do, it's either uh, jealousy. Mm -hmm. I'm better than him. I know more about roofing than him, but yet he's over here. Or it's uh, this guy posts way too much. He's crazy. Like he just wants attention. They don't understand the social media, like, like Gary Vee, you go to those events, dude, that he tells you what to do, and I do it. And most people who don't go to the events, don't invest in themselves, are all strictly in their little neighborhood of roofing. They don't see the big picture, what's available to them. Who influenced you the most this year? Oh, that's a good question, man. You know, I'm very fortunate to have access to a lot of influence influencers in this industry in and out of the industry um, one of them would be chuck toki uh, he is a retail king he teaches like corporations he's gone from big business to now the roofing and he's got his top rep sales thing going on with john dying them shout out chuck toki but he is really a good influencer because he's like an elder statesman i look up to him like he does retail i don't do retail and so if you could do retail, you could do insurance, but uh, I'm not sure that you can do retail if you do just do insurance. It's a whole different couple of things you got to tweak, but he's a, my greatest influencer. Anytime I have sales questions or personnel or recruiting or comp plan, anything I call him and get his feedback for sure. Um, in the sales part, um, in the like that Jay door and I, 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 you know, I, you know, introduce you to, he is a great philosophy. He's probably read a thousand books in his lifetime. He's guys young, like younger than me, really influential guy. I could get an outside view. He works for Brad Lee, Lightspeed out in Vegas. They're real tight. I get his perspective because he's worked he's, with- He's employee? Um, he's worked for him in the past and um, he has his own thing now, but he was just out there, uh, Brad Lee's doing a book tour. So he was just out there this weekend, but he's, they're, they're friends. So, but he's trained Fortune 500 companies. All these people outside my industry, I seem to ha tr like not trust them, but get their opinion because we're in our own little atmosphere here, our little bubble. And so it's always good to get outside, you know, cr critique and criticism and just ideas objectively. They're not in, 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 in the industry. So they could tell you, hey, you know. What have changed in the roofing industry in 2021? What has changed? I, name name few things you've never seen before. I will say it, um, and it's hard for me to admit this, 
But door knocking, I feel like, you know, it's never going to go out of style. It's, I, I, I believe that. The one-on-one -on -one human contact, I think, will always be there. But I will say the insurance referral people are gaining a lot of momentum, a lot of... Um, what is the insurance referral people? Like, the people, like, I'll be in a neighborhood, we'll have it locked up, so we think... There'll be one, one, two random contractors in there. Well, how did you get in there? We don't have any signs or nothing up. Insurance guy referred them. And that's becoming more and more um, of an issue. And it's something to look at. Door-to-door you -door -door insurance referrals, you got to have a little bit of both marketing, whatever. But, man, the, the insurance referral people... I've seen more and more of that happening on the block. Insurance agents. Yeah. Referring. Agents. Yeah. Contractors. Yeah. In fact, we're going to make a big announcement at, uh, at uh, Hellpro. We have a huge, huge addition to our company, and he's going to help us with that part of it. So we should get that dialed in. But that's changed. Like, more and more people. Like, we just watched the video about the door knockers. People are, there's a lot of propaganda coming out against door knockers now. And they're making it a safety issue. They're making it a, a, you know, breaking the law issue when in fact it's just propaganda. But I see a lot brainwashing. of, yeah, brainwashing insurance companies going around the side to have these people do their bidding for them and talk third party validation saying, hey, don't trust these guys. These guys are, while some people are legit moster scammers or whatever. So I see a lot of hate against door knockers. Um, I also see, uh, but you know what's great about it, I see a lot of people from what I see, I went to RoofCon, great event. Um, I probably won't be attending a lot of events. I know I'm attending yours next month, um, but there's a lot of, there's, there's, a, there's a little charge of people who are coming in here who are talking about contribution and sharing and giving instead of just taking and pitching. And I see that transformation going on and that's great to see because I'm an abundant mentality, and a lot of successful people I know are about that abundance mentality. So those couple of things that I've seen are changing in the industry in 2021. Any new objections you haven't heard before? Any new objections? Uh, I'm trying to think. No, just the same ones. Um, I'm going to call it in myself. I'm going to ask my insurance agent. I'm going to ask... My Uncle Paul again. Do you recommend calling a claim with a homeowner right there? Is it too much pressure, you feel like? I was brought in to call in a claim with a customer. Now, does that mean I'm getting the phone and, and doing that? No, not unless they're super elderly or they're like a minority and they can't speak good English, then I'll do that. I try to just be there to guide them to get the call, get the claim number, get off the phone. I don't need all data on there. I want, and then I don't want them to incriminate themselves by saying certain things that, that are wind damage or hail. And, you know, if you say it's wind and there's hail up there, then they say it's denied, you know, so just keep them on track like that. Do I recommend it? I always recommend that you call in the claim as soon as you can. Because like I said before, that if you leave that client, you could do a follow-up the next morning or next day but the longer the time you got, the longer the time they got to ask their uncle, their mom, their dad, people who don't know anything about what we do, and that'll change them. And then they'll try to handle it themselves. Seems reasonable. It's my insurance. They should care about me. I pay them to protect me, but it's just not like that, as you know. Uh, best sales commission plan. Oh, my gosh. Learned a lot about that one too this year. So we're on a front end commission plan. We get a percentage of total once the ACV's checks turn in and then we get a percentage off the supplement once the build is done. So we're talking about cash flow. You know me, Grant Cardone, it's about cash flow, not cash. How much cash do I got going now? We got things going on with life to live. We need our cash yesterday. So with that being said, comp plans create behavior. So if you're going to have the front end comp plan, you need to go out and sell in order to get paid. And that keeps you focused on income producing activity, knocking doors, setting up meetings, going to, you know, events to generate um, new business. Um, so that's what the front end comp plan. I'm a fan of that. Um, the challenge becomes with any company, you have to have production in order. That's got to be running tight. 
otherwise, you know, you're going to go through a lot of problems that everyone else has with production. Um, I don't know, you visited a lot of companies, we could talk about that off camera and see if you've seen anybody have a perfect production uh, in their company, because I certainly haven't seen a perfect, I've seen good ones, but so with that, the 105050, I believe is, um, it's like kind of like archaic. I think, you know, I think it's archaic and it's just a relic of the, the past that keeps just, nobody knows how to get rid of it because nobody could think of new things. But the 105050, what was good about it is that you see your job from start to finish. You're more concerned about it because you have to be, right? Um, so you take more care of your files. So I don't know, my personal favorite is like, of course I'd like to make more money on a 105050, but I'll take my money today on a front end. Let's talk about competition on the block. What do you see? You knock on doors with your team, you see another company. What's your reaction? How do you uh, discuss it with your team? What's allowed, what's not allowed? We see companies taking someone's yard signs. We see companies, you know, you knock doors, you leave, they come right behind you. That happens. What do you do? Well, it's like, what is the saying? How you do anything is how you do everything, okay? So my coming from me, Ben Menchaca, I'm going to tell you what I expect on the, on the block when I'm out. If I'm on the block working, go to the next one. Just move one over. Go two over. Um, this year we were, had an early storm out in um, Northfield and all over there. And there was a company, I know the guys or whatever, but there was mostly farms. And so I was out there, they were out there, and um, there was some confusion. We got it straightened out, but basically the guy went and knocked the door after my people went and knocked it. And then he got the, the inspection and ended up calling the claim. And I was super pissed because it's like, dude, like, there's so much area to go around. Why do you got to be right there? But why he were able to do it and your guys did not call in claim? Why people want Oh, because it was a misunderstanding. On, on that part, it was like, here was the, the one that they got, right? The inspection they took from us. Well, this was the brother. The brother's like, no, I already have someone, but you could go talk to my sister. Well, my people were there before, but they didn't have that warm referral, so he went with them. But here's what I'll say. I worked in uh, St. Michael, and I, it was half-inch hail, and we were working a, I was working a subdivision. I started putting up signs, and then everybody start coming by me and I just, I don't mind competition because I know, I believe in my sales skills and my ability to connect and communicate with people is superior than anyone I'll see out here on the block. That's just me personally, my confidence and my ability, I believe. But when you come right behind me, it's kind of, or when you knock people's signs, I think that's unprofessional. I think we need to have a, some professional courtesy with each other if we're just gonna, dude, because, uh, uplifting and doing better for the industry. That's what we're about, right? Man, show some professional courtesy. You're out there. Everyone's there trying to make money for their family and do the right thing. You don't need to be that guy. That's a scarcity mindset. If I don't go knock hit, well, he had success here. Let me go and piggyback off his success. No, go create your own success, man. You're going to learn more from doing that than to, to follow me and to try to pick up the low hanging fruit. There's a, there's a way of doing things and the way of not doing things, like I said before, with the door knocking. Let's just show each other some professional courtesy. This is a small industry. People forget that, too. Like, there were some people who did some shady stuff in my organization this year. They forget. Like, everybody talks. Anywhere you go, it's going to follow you. It's going to follow you. And, and that's what happens right now with all the drama. Like, you know, people think it's like, oh, I, I'm just going to do one post, uh, one Facebook, one whatever. But then it stays and it's hard like you're gonna run out of people who you can go to like we in the last few weeks was crazy for me like i see you know these fights and you know we, we go to these camps you know like camp dolmatico camp dimitri camp like wherever you know or different facebook groups sooner or later you're gonna run out of groups remember waxman like he you know it's not just like waxman can come and screw people in one facebook group and not gonna now he's gonna go to different one and do the same there. People talk and they talk fast. That's what they don't understand. Like people know everything. Like you'd be surprised at the stuff I hear. I'm just like, dude, I don't wanna hear that. You know, like that's none of my business, but you're right. It's a small industry. And if you don't do right by people, that's why it's so fascinating to see how some of these 
players are still in the game after all the dirty shit they did. But I think the internet wasn't as powerful maybe back then. Well, now it's a different time and you cannot, with the internet, you gotta, you gotta be legit. And you have to keep your reputation in check because if you ruin your reputation, it's all you have. My good friend, Deshaun Bryan, shout out Roof Hustlers, right? The guy called me out, man. He's like, I thought you were trying to lose weight, dog. What are you eating over there? Like, he called me out the other day. I can't post no Dude, I got eyeballs on me, bro. Like, everybody watches what you do, even if they don't like or comment on your post. So what's your take on a recent drama? Like, uh, doesn't it feel like every other post is some kind of drama, some kind of dispute, you know, over commissions, over, like, especially storm chasers down south. Like, it's just, it's such a mess. Um, my, I guess my question is why so many people on, in sales work for companies without um, contracts, without mm -hmm. agreements? I, I just saw a person left uh, RKG, Kimber Gar Garcia's, and the same thing. Like they tagged me and they're like, oh, Dimitri, you know, they're not paying me. And I'm like, do you have a contract for me to review? It's like, oh, <laughs> I, I don't do a contract with no one. I'm like, what do you want me to do? Well, here's the thing, right? We come into this, like I came into this, blue collar worker, never had any business acumen or any business mentors. We're coming in, work 40 hours a week, we get paid. We're not used to like the guy running the show and all the contracts and business. So that's one, that's naiveness. We come in naive. You, do, like, you come into business, you have to have everything on paper. I signed a contract, I signed a thing um, last year about this year and my comp plan and everything signed it good to go. I didn't do that in my early stages and then everyone took my money. Right? So you have to be, if you live your life like this, man, I take full responsibility for everything that occurs in my universe, good, bad, or ugly. Even if I wasn't responsible, I take responsibility because I put myself in that situation. That situation couldn't occur if I didn't make a conscious decision to put myself in that place, in that situation. So if we approach it like that, I don't think you could ever be mad at anybody. It's just like, what does uh, Paul Reed say? The dummy tax. You're going to have to pay the dummy tax, dog. You know? And those taxes add up, and pretty soon you're not dumb no more. And it's hard to say, but it's a reality. Trust me, if it offends you, you'll love me later because it's going to teach you a lesson. Get everything on paper. Have everything that you want talked about before you do any work because once you get into it, you get 50, 80 files, 100 files deep, it's too late. Tell me again why you work for someone else and don't go on your own. Uh, you know, her, man, I am uh, this... I keep saying it and I keep saying it throughout the interview, but this has been a real challenging and introspective self inventory year. And, and just looking at it, like I'm looking at other people's like Dave Taggart just left, started his own company. Um, you see all these other people branch off and I wonder why I'm, I'm watching people brand. Why would you, why would you leave a company if everything's cool and you guys all made a lot of money? Like, why would you leave? Um, and what do you see usually is happening? Like, what would be your advice? If I'm a sales rep and I'm calling you as mentors, like, hey, Ben, you know, give me advice. You know, I work for this company. I made 200000 this year, but I'm thinking to do it myself. Like, what would you tell me? I would just say make sure you have all your pieces in order, man. Just that, that's all. If you want to make a transition and you got, I don't think it takes a lot to start a company, right? You just need some business credit or whatever. Like, but is it always a good idea? It. It isn't always a good idea. If you're not responsible and disciplined, don't do it. If you like to blow money like me, like don't do it. Like I, I know myself. Like I wouldn't get a motorcycle. I would never buy a motorcycle because I'm crazy. Like I, I, I'll crash. I already know that about myself, right? I know I'm just crazy. So I'm not gonna get the motorcycle. If you know that you can't drive the vehicle, don't get in the vehicle. But for some people, they have an epiphany and they get it. They know the production. They know the ins and out of construction. They know the ins and out of business in certain, or, or at least if they're a great salesman, they have a great network of a production guy they could pick up or, a, you know, a CFO or whatever, someone to run the books, if not them. But like, 
if you've got those certain skills or can develop them before you open shop, that's what I would suggest. Um, I, there's, I, I find that I'd like to be, at least right now, it could change. I like being like that cog in the wheel, like just doing my part. You know, everyone do 1%, it adds up to this 100% at the end of the year, everybody doing their part. And I love the teamwork aspect because what I found like, Dude, how much money can we make? We can make whatever. It's always going to be available. It's not about the money. It's about helping people contributing to other people's lives. I go back to that, right? And it took me a while. Like, I always talk about money. I'm about my paper. I get it. But this year I'm seeing, like, it's more about contribution and leadership. And I would say if you can handle that and, and be disciplined, then go out on your own, open your business. And if you got the funding, great. But if you're not there and you just have this great dream of, oh, I want to be the top dog. I want to own my own company. I want to have my own brand. And I think those are the wrong reasons. Those are grandiose ideas that could lead you into trouble later. How much time do you see uh, sales guys are wasting if they're honest to themselves? Like, because you talk a lot about doing the activity. And I see a lot of people who are not honest with themselves. They claim that they work hard. They claim that they don't have a time to go to the gym or door knock or whatever. And you see them wasting tons on social media, stupid things. And do you see that too? Or is it just, I, here's the thing. I, I personally could do more. Okay. I do a lot, but I could do more. Everyone could do more, but you got to understand you. Here's the, here's what's great about this industry. You could be, Low producer, or not really low, you probably won't have a job, but you could be middle producer, top producer, you could be family man, you could be the guy who likes to go hunting and not, you know, you could do whatever you want. That's the best part about what we do. It's not the money, it's the time freedom. So if Ben Menchaca is going to be a beast and go out here and do all this, these hours on the block, that don't mean you have to do it, sure. but you have to be effective with the hours that you put in. That's all I'll say about that. I'm seeing that you don't need to be out there all the time like um, I am or whatever. You just need to do what's whatever is a fit for your family and your finances, right? But the most important thing, like I said, just if you're only going to do five hours a day, make it the most impactful. In how, how many hours sales rep on average work in your opinion? Like actual put work? A couple hours. A couple hours. A day. Yeah. Like a couple. Is it, like because, the average, average is it because it's exhausting? Is it just a hard thing? Or why only a couple hours? Well, you know, man. Or is it because of destructions? It, it's, um, well, a lot of people have preconceived notions that you need to have a storm to work. Oh, no storm, no work? I'm going fishing. I'm going to the party boat. We live in a land of 10,000 lakes. Everybody's at the lake in the summer, right? Very a big distraction. But... Other people know that there's discontinued shingles out there. If we have a storm date, we can kind of, you know, maneuver that way. And people, um, there's people that are dedicated to their craft and there's people that are dedicated to other things. That's all. And who am I to say what, whatever? I just say what I do. Um, and that's what I noticed too. Like the amount of activity and focus and discipline that I have and that I possess and what I carry out daily is... Like not everybody's got that, man. That's what I learned like about sales too. Not everybody's gonna have that intense focus and, and drive to be out there for seven hours, eight hours a day or six, six days a week, not coming home until you get three, not coming home until you get one. That's discipline. It's discipline, man. And it's, and it's learning to go over there. I heard a great thing this year and I knew it like subconsciously, but someone said, we get paid to take no's. We get like $50 for every no we take. Hmm. If you think about it, because your job is to go collect those no's. I think it was Michael O'Donnell in sales, solar sales. You know that guy? He's an old dude and he's doing crushing all the young kids in solar. Hmm. Been doing it since 81. Fantastic, un un phenomenal story. Anyways, we get paid to go take the no's. And look, people are like, if you're in sales and you're like emotional, you shouldn't be in sales because you're going to get told no. Nobody likes getting told no. But those people at the door, they don't know what they don't know. I had recently had a family member 
say, what do you do? They're in California. What do you do with those door knockers? I just ignore them and this and that. And I'm like, you have a nephew in door to door and you still say no to, I go, this, this industry changes. Like there's little kids making $40,000 in the summer, like 20 year olds, 19 year olds. Wow. And it's amazing to me. And people are just like, oh, I don't want to be bothered. Well, think about someone else for a change. Like they're trying to change their lives and they have balls to knock on your door. You wouldn't do it. So why don't you at least give them two seconds of your time to listen to their pitch? Uh, you mentioned um, not storm years. Like what do you do in a non-storm environment? Like Colorado, Minnesota, like storm uh, states, hail states. Uh, what kind of activity should anyone do? Like let's say, like I see a lot of depressed people in Chicago now. Colorado didn't get a lot of hail this year. Minnesota, a few smaller ones. Yeah, Everybody's sad. waiting for the storm and storm makes us lazier because it's easy, low hanging fruit. What do you do? What's their plan for the year when you don't get a storm? Well, here's the thing. I'm spoiled, right? I, I keep saying it. I love money making Minnesota. We're a matching state. Um, fortunately, I was trained on discontinued products early on in my career, and I've been just developing that more. So I can go see a landmark and that, or whatever. I could see, you know, Tiger Stripe. I could identify, go up to them and just present the pitch. Hey, how'd you like to increase the value of your home for the price of the deductible? Now's the time to do it. We just had a recent storm, blah, blah, blah. I can go out, identify discontinued products. That's one way or go find a bunch of three tabs. Um, downtown Minneapolis is a gold mine. If anyone wants a free place to go knock, probably hit a lot of renters there, but you work, you work um, discontinued shingles. You perhaps get better retail because I know people in retail, are, they're still selling roofs. Like people in retail fascinate me because they make stuff happen without a storm. Mm -hmm. It's really fascinating to me. And, but they have ways of generating leads too, as well. They're not just out there knocking doors for retail, you know, um, the solar guys, solar guys are out there killing it. I, I, I don't know if you've heard, supposedly it's a solar gold rush right now. Um, so what you do in a non-storm event, did, did you get in a solar yet? No, no, not yet. Why not? Well, here's the thing, what I've been doing my research and, um, it was Michael Donald, Sam Taggart, and all these guys. They had a wonderful sales panel, solar panel at RoofCon. The best explanation I've ever seen in my life. I asked a solar guy, what's about this and this? What's a kilowatt? And it's just like foreign to me. When I got out of that forum, I was more educated than I've ever been in my life. What I'm understanding, it's uh, the Biden's going to pass the Green Deal, and there's going to be a lot of tax credits. So big business is forcing us to sell solar to become energy independent or whatever they call it and i was just like well why would i sell solar if my bill's 400 and you're, it's only going to knock off 10 bucks or 20 dollars? why would i make a 30-year commitment and what i found is it's a long-term play because you're going to lock in your rates and you're going to save money in the long run and then you, and depending on the municipalities you can sell it back or whatever your energy so Everything seems to be, and when the pol politicians get involved, it's kind of like it's happening. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I haven't gotten into solar. It seems attractive. I know some young kids way younger than me that are mil millionaires because of solar. Wow. So it's very interesting. And it's colliding with a roofing. Roofing. Industry. But yeah. do, do you see also scams and bad players already? Well, that's what I'm seeing. That's one of the major things that I hear from everybody. I had a guy call me from Florida. He's like, Ben, hey, I need some door knockers for solar. I got just front end, a hand of the back end and closing, just knockers. I need door knockers for solar. And we got to talking and he's like, I'm hearing from different people. It's kind of like roofing industry, a lot of scumbags in the solar and install issues. My thing is like, I'm sure anybody could sell solar, but what about the production and the warranty? Are you just there to sell, rip and run? Seems like a rip and run. Seems like a waxman would love this, this industry. And this is what's happening. We, we, we did a um, company tour in uh, California a couple of months ago. Uh, get this, so the lady purchased solar, well, didn't purchase, you're talking about seventy, eighty thousand dollars $80,000 finance deal. They came in concrete uh, tile roof. They still ruined it. Like the, the, how it was installed, 
she has three rental units so it's her house but she rents two or three out and it started leaking in all the units after the solar install she started having complaints she didn't even own it it's a lease program like you can't repair it because you're not the owner so you you spend like 80 90 grand some like 70 to 90 grand you can't even touch it she's suing the solar company for uh, messing uh, her roofing system she lost tenants because the mold inside was so bad the roof is still not done i'm working with a roofer he's like we can't even do it because she's not an owner and they don't let her just nightmare yeah and, uh, and what i see is what i don't like about solar games now it's not good for the consumer like the middleman gets paid so much like you're talking about finance fees dealer fees you know, like that sales guy will go get like 10K in his pocket, but the homeowner will be financing it for the next 20, 30 years. It's, it's not a good deal. Well, I heard, I heard the same thing from a guy. They put on a new roof, they put on a solar thing, and they scuffed up all the, the roofing, the granules are falling off. Like I hear bad install issues, and that'd be my only concern is like with roofing, we're the front. I'm, I'm there throughout the whole process till the job is complete. And even after, like you can get a hold of me Monday through Sunday, I pick up the phone. I can't imagine having to deal with all those calls from, it's not even, I didn't even install it and I'm getting calls because that's my client. So there's a disconnect there, right? For customer service in that industry and they need to work on that. But I, yeah, I hear the profits and uh, margins are amazing. I just don't, there's got to be something about the install and the people. It has to be good for the consumer. It's like a little, it's like a weird deal now. Uh, the one guy that we know is offering it and solar now and it's like he, it's like a big thing to him like it's there's like a lot it, of questions there. yeah there's so many questions it's just like but i get it it makes sense wrap in the roofing with the but how but it's also like man we're most people are short-term thinkers we're living for friday we're li working for beer money like how are you going to get someone to think that far advanced i mean maybe you can sell them but then what about they regret it later? You know, it, like you said, if it doesn't work for the client, then you're going to hear about it. What are your plans for the winter? Uh, well, to be honest with you, this summer was just so, uh, it was exciting, but it was draining at the same time because just dealing with people and doing this and that. And, and it was kind of drained out, like, honestly, like at the end of August. And then I went to RoofCon and I got reinvigorated because there's some great stories and you meet some great people and talk to wonderful people. So like, and then I went, I just got back from Colorado and California. So I'm like, just ready to work again, you know? So important to recharge. It, it, it is. I've been going years, year round, year round. And it just, and it started affecting my health. I'm dealing with some health issues. And so my thing is to take care of, try to work on my health, Dimitri. This, you know, work on my health. And I, it's very hard for me, man. I'm working on that. Um, we might go to South Carolina. 100 burpees a day. 100 burpees a day and some uh, vinegar cider, right? Yep. Okay, good, good call. Um, we might go to South Carolina because we have an office there. It's been open over a year. We've got some young people down there that are doing very well. So we want to send the cavalry over and kind of boost that market up. If whoever wants to go, they're going to pay for us to go. We might go down to South Carolina. I'll probably have to go. I'm being considered for different positions now in the company, national recruiter, sales trainer, whatever, sales manager. Like I'm looking at different options um, for the future, but basically, I wanted to take the, 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 the winter to kind of decompress and um, see exactly what I want, man. Because like people ask me, well, what do you want? And I'm like, I don't really know. I never expected to be where I'm at now and just to have my bills paid and not worry about my phone bill and, and little things that used to bother me. And then, of course, having all these events and serving people and contributing to them. It's like very, it's a lot to take in. But... Um, I need to sit down and find out what I want. That way I can pr project all my energy and focus towards it. Because as you know, if we do anything for the money or whatever, just to do it or just to do it for so to make somebody happy or for the money, then your numbers are going to reflect that because you're not doing them for the right reasons. Absolutely. You already mentioned it that uh, August uh, was that burning point, burnout uh, point. How does your mood changes in different seasons? 
and is there such a thing as seasonal depression in the roofing sales? I don't know about roofing sales. I know it was when I had a job and barely had any money, it was always depressing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, seasons, seasons, it was always seasonal. Yeah, um, but, but, I, but I feel like the snow is common and getting colder. A lot of guys, uh, you know, like reacting to it. I'm sure, they, I'm sure they do if they don't have a personal development plan in place. I read a lot. I look at YouTube videos. I, I get on calls. I, 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 I absorb a lot of information during my downtime. I have a lot of books that I've got from the summer I need to catch up on. Um, so I use it to, like I said, take some self inventory, rewrite my goals, do some like, hey man, this is what needs to get done this year. This is what can happen in five years. I haven't even made my five year plan yet, your, your goal plan. But me, I use it to skill up, be head of the competition, because you know 90% of the people aren't doing that. And that's how I've gotten to where I'm at. Do what others won't so you can have, you know, the life that you want. And that's how I use it. Um, like I said, this year, if we go to South Carolina, I will be helping training people, getting people, doing what I like to do. Just show people what I know, have them have success, and build a, like, it's all about, like, it's not about me. It's about others at this point in my life. You know, um, I have to take care of myself and be here tomorrow. So I got to work on that. So it, it's, it's contributing to my health and well-being and my mental being and just helping others. That's why I want to do this winter. Is it harder to find sales reps this year? Um, not for us. It was pretty cool. And thanks again for the video, man. That's, that's, that's a great recruiting video. It really helped people. I tell people get that question all the time, by the way, how, how do you recruit? I go, well, I'm lucky. I, I have a video of people come to me. They want to work with Ben Machaca from here to there. They call me from all over. I want to work with you. Um, and this is, uh, I, I want to take a break here. Like we did not try to make a video on the recruiting. The thing is when you throw yourself out there and when you create a content, when you show the world who you are, you're gonna attract people like yourself. You know, like when you make a video and you make a statement, you instantly attract people who agree with that statement and who will like or dislike your personality. And uh, when people like you, like it's personal branding 101. I'm actually speaking at a Sam Taggart conference this year in January. And uh, my keynote will be is like how to build a personal brand. Like there's a few things that you have to do for the personal brand. But when you build that brand, people, you, you become a magnet. People are going to follow you. Like Gary Vee had that problem for years. Everybody wanted to work for his organization because of his personality. You just like a magnet. And Gary Vee never sells anything. He never goes in and try to, to do anything. What do you think that's worth? Let me ask you a question. What do you think that's worth? Let's say, let's say just David Taggart or whatever, for, for whatever reason. You got a, a, a huge personality, great guy, and he's with the company, and he attracts people, whatever. What is that worth to a company? Um, well, it's, it's like this. It's um, in every team, like basketball team, like let's say you're Michael Jordan, like you still need a team, but that's why, do you remember Michael Jordan, Scotty Pippen, they have a huge gap in salary. One guy was like $11 million or something and Jordan was, so I feel like if the person is underpaid, you know, because Scotty Pippen was very, very, um, you know, good player and Jordan would not be the same without him, right? So you have to recognize the value. I don't know what it what, what it worth, but um, if you have that person, like it's definitely worth something. I w if I would be the boss uh, and I would have a superstar, I would make sure that he feels like superstar, like nice bonuses, special privileges, maybe a car, maybe maybe stake in the company. Even you have to treat um, that magnet in the company that helps you grow because i mean if you're honest about it you know let's say you know like on, if we're talking about sports you have that tom brady you have that the guy like it money talks obviously and if you're honest with yourself that without that guy you would not be 20 million dollar company you would be 10 million dollar company so you as a business owner be reasonable and you look at the 10 million dollar increase 
how much are you willing to share? Let's say you give him $100,000 bonus. What is it, 1% of $10 million? You know, but that $100,000 bonus would be amazing. Like, I love bonuses. I love giving, you know, like, if you give someone envelope with a, ch with a cash, like, I actually have done it, like, uh, check this out, like, last few weeks, I've, like, nobody asked me, but I, uh, I love Facebook, how easy it is to send money. It's almost like a text message. Your debit card is attached, and few people in our community have done something for opinion sites. And I wired one guy like 2,500 bucks. I wired another guy like 1,000 bucks. Just because I want like, w w and for what? One guy was like mess managing my group in uh, like Roofing Insights private group, just one of the admins. I'm like, he's doing such a good job. I'll just give him 1,000 yeah. bucks. It, it just goes a long way. Like when, when somebody gives you 1,000 bucks, like for me, it's not a lot of money. But it, and for that guy, it's probably not a lot of money, but that's the recognition. So for me, if I have that superstar on my team and he attracts talent, you know, you know maybe it's office, maybe it's, you know, in sales, whatever, I want to recognize it and I want him never ever to even want to go anywhere. So yeah, that's yeah. what I would do. It doesn't have to be a country, it doesn't have to be, and maybe it is that 5% stake in the company. Because if you know you have that guy, that's why NBA players, they have, you know, that five-year agreement. I mean, Jordan is associated with the Bulls, you know, because they build the team around him. But you also have to recognize others. And Scottie Pippen is a sad story. He wasn't recognized. And it was, it, it was very sad. Yeah. Okay, got you. Yeah, I grew up in Chicago during those times. What, a, what an amazing time to see basketball. I just watched that game yesterday, the Vikings game, or the Cowboys. I'm just like, uh, I don't really watch sports, um, but anyways. You just have to, you have to, you have to, as a business owner, you have to be reasonable. And your people who work for you, they, they should know that something like a raise should not be always when you ask for it. Sometimes it has to be recognition. Like sometimes you have to, have, have to start at the top, down, like, hey, keep doing what you're doing. I have this for you. It could be a car. It could be whatever. But but the recognition have to be there. Well, that's that's what they say. Um, babies cry for it, and old men die for it. Recognition. I know a guy. I I uh, hope his boss don't watch this, but he did two over two million dollars, and like he was supposed to get a Harley or a watch or not. They didn't give him anything. They just kept it with the family, you know, the owners, because they're all sure. whatever. And it's like, dude, like, why wouldn't you give this guy? Like, you didn't have it's to bring in that thing. two million. He did. Why couldn't you just give him? It's nothing. To him. And you know how long it would have? That little, that little gift would have just. All right, I want to do more for you. I want to, you know, these guys take care of me. People just want recognition and know that they're doing, you know, th they're doing the right thing. And I just don't get the greed, man. Like, I don't get it. Like, mm -hmm. how much money do you need? Dude, like, it's just... And it goes a long way. Like that, I mean, I love envelopes with cash. That's what I love. You know, I work with you here. you know, 1000 bucks, 2000 bucks, whatever. It's a smaller amount, but it, it counts. It adds up. No, it does. It, it's, it does. All right, next. Now, you also started working with the business owners on recruiting and helping them train sales reps. What challenges do you see there? Like... I feel like so many business owners are failing to build their training system because they've never have salespeople. They, everybody wants to go easy route. Here's the couple folders, go, go sell for me. What challenges? Well, I, basically what I'm seeing is that the owner is involved in running the company and he doesn't have time personally to train his people. That's the reason they call me. That's the reason they call Becca Switzer, Deshaun Bryant, Sam Taggart. Chuck Toki, all these guys. Adam Benzman, great guy. I'm excited to see him at your event. That's what I'm seeing. They don't have time um, to train their guys, so they call us. Um, people want that one quick fix, but you know the investment in time in your people is where you're going to get the greatest return. Um, and that's great, though, that they would pay for someone like us to come and train their people because it shows that they care. Um, but that's what I'm seeing. They don't have time to train, so they have other people train them um i mean getting the buy-in from the people getting the buy-in from your people you're training why should i listen to you 
Why should I listen to you? Why should it? Because training's hard, man. You got to get the buy-in first, and then you, then you, then you could get the activity down. Like I said, what we do isn't rocket science, but getting the mindset right and the buy-in are pretty important things to do. So in the beginning, you try to build that trust and that and get the mindset ready before you go out and actually do the physical activity. But the main thing, like I said before, is what I'm seeing is that people don't have time or they're not making time to train their salesmen, which is crazy to me because if I was an owner, I'd want to go spend time with the guys I'm hiring just to show them my flavor and what I expect out of them. If you show people what you expect them to do, here, this is what I expect you to do daily, five days a week, four days a week, seven days a week, whatever it is. This is what I expect you to do and we'll be fine. We'll get along great. Because I know from that activity what results it'll, it'll lead to if they're actually doing it. Because I've been there, done that. Bought the t-shirt twice, you know? <laughs> so that's what I'd say. Do you have some kind of test um, you do with people to determine what's best for them? Like if they should be in sales, in production, or have a business? You know, me personally, no. Because um, I don't run the company. But Jordan Fox is great at that. Um, he likes to say aces in their places. Uh, we have a guy coming in wanting to do sales. Jordan sat down with him, kind of gauged him. Well, you'd probably be better in production. And so he ended up being in production. Had a guy come in for production. Well, you might want to try sales. So he's the gauge um, for that, for our company. And he is really good at that, um, at determining people's strengths and weaknesses. He'll tell me straight up, well, you're good at this, but you can improve on this. And I take his cr uh, constructive criticism. I take it. I listen to people, you know, because the guy, like, he knows what he's talking about. I've seen his past results. We've grown a lot as a company. I think we have, like, 20, 30 salesmen. Um, and we're going to get rid of people. We're going to hire people. We're still growing. With this new addition of this gentleman that's going to be announced, it's going to really, he's already attracting top talent and recruiting um, and has a large, large uh, network of insurance people he deals with. So I'm excited about that. I'm excited about where this company is growing, but a large part of it is because Jordan knows how to put people where they need to be. Share a success story. Someone you work with, sales rep or business owner, someone you touched or you've been exposed to this year who changed his life or like quadruple sales or he's... I, you know, in, I can't say directly because I work with a lot of people off and on, but I'll, give, I'll give you a couple of them. Um, we had, uh, we had um, some guys come in that had been watching me throughout the years and said, hey, it's slow in my state. Can I come and work with you in Iowa? Like, literally, like, begging because, dude, the, you know, the money's drying up or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, sure. I trusted them. They've been top producers. Well, one of them been $2 million producer before. The other one is 20 years old. The son, father and son team. They came in within three weeks or two, two weeks and sold 600 squares. I've never even sold an apartment complex yet. And so is that me? I don't know, man. Like they had some skills. They were great at networking. But I brought these people over there and some of those people had success, right? Um, and then just what I hear across the country, there's been lots of individuals that said, hey, you know, thanks for showing me that flashlight trick with the windows. I made 60 grand on windows this week. I would have never, I would have walked past that. And people, some people in my order, some people close to me are like, dude, why are you always sharing that stuff? Because here's one thing. There's one thing to share and there's one thing to do, right? We could teach everything, but how many people are going to actually go out there and implement it? You tell people you need to become a media company. You need to become a brand. It's the same thing. How many people are doing that out there? Right. They'll do it one or two videos and then they quit. Yeah. Everybody starts with zero and then like, you know, guys like me, we will do three videos per week and they'll do three videos. They don't get hundred views. They get discouraged and they quit. I don't quit. I have videos. You know how many likes I used to get like three years ago? Like one or two on all my posts. You know how many people watch my stuff now? Like it's just, 
you show up every day, you build the consistency, and then you build the following. And then you said, like attracts like. People are going to gravitate towards, they like Adam Benzin. They like Becca Switzer. People like who they like to exactly. get their information from. There's plenty enough to go around. Um, Adam was telling me, we were talking, been really close in such a short amount of time with that guy. He's super knowledgeable. I didn't know he was in the industry that long. He was telling me, like, hey, we got our own lanes. We're not stepping on each other. And we're finding out, we're trying to find out, he's like, Ben, we got to figure out your niche. And we, from what I've gathered, he said, I'm good with new people. I'm good at introducing door to door to new companies. That's so I'm working on that being my niche. That's where I'm most effective or where I get the most feedback from, Exactly. you know? And w what I want to add to uh, media company is the thing about our, our consumption, it's only growing. If you look at you know, Netflix, Amazon Prime, all of this, like YouTube, you know, yeah, YouTube is there, but we still, you know, you come home and you're still always looking for shows to watch. I see it all the time in social, recommend the show, recommend the show, but the same happening in the professional world, because yes, I want to know what Becca is teaching, but if I see a new star like yourself or someone else, I'm like, this guy has something, you know, he's onto something and people always hungry for content. Like we consume and learn so much and information is moving faster and faster and faster. So every day people waking up and they're like, okay, today I have four hours of consumption on my breaks, on my lunch, on my drive time, who I'm going to listen to. And if I did not make new interview that day, then I have nothing to offer. There's nothing in the programming. So you have to supply the demand. Demand is there. And you are who you are. You're going to yeah. attract two people. And some people will turn on you. Some people will not. But I, I'm not for everybody. I, I still have people that don't think. They, they, they think. Like one guy's like, oh, your 15 minutes of fame is already going to be up. Or someone told me that one time. And I'm like, well, I'm still here. Like, so whatever. Um, but, and you'd be surprised. I listened to you when you said we have more consumers than we do have creators. Mm -hmm. That really stuck up in my, stuck in my mind. So, I help Adam Benzin with this thing. He's not great at social media. Well, I had a talk with him like, bro, you, he, he talked to me and gave me some great advice and then I mentored him and said, listen, people want to see what's going on in our lives, no matter how mundane it be. And he's like, well, I have some, you know, it, uh, toys and whatever. I feel like that's bragging along. People want to see what a door to door, a door to door guy has this, this and this. Like, it's possible if he can do it, I can do it. They need that example and to show them because they're living lives that are just uh, going to pay their bills, man. And if there's someone there to inspire them and show them that there is a way besides the traditional college and, you know, get a good degree and all that, then they, that's exciting to them. Even like, they're like, what do you post? Man, I, I post everything. You see me, I'm on vacation, I post, I post my food, I post social events, you know, and here's the thing with the content, I was talking to some people like Deshaun Bryan and Adam Benzman, dude, they make a lot of good income from their content and their trainings. Like pretty soon it just, like pretty soon like you, you're not even going to be salesman. You're just going to be content creator or trainer. And there's nothing wrong with it. We need new Rodney new webs. We need new, like we need specialists. Same happening with me. I want to do this for a living. You know, many companies cannot figure out their YouTube channels or their games. Like, someone has to do it. Someone has to. If you want to learn, you have to. People are okay paying for education. The same with the event space. You know, I love conferences. That's why we created our conference. And by the way, guys, if you're not coming to Roofing Process Conference, you're going to miss out. Guys like Ben is going to be. But the thing is, people want to travel. People want to go to. I want to go to good event. And. I, Dude, I just went to a YouTube conference, two days. I came from it, we learned like five, six things. Like we actually left with my videographer and say, I'm gonna do this, this, and this. Came in, changed a few things, almost double our views on every video we made. Wow. Like little things, like pictures of the thumbnails. Like I'll give you an example. Um, sad face, like, you know, we always like to smile. And there was like five or six YouTubers on the main stage sharing how they do their thumbnails. I mean, people who has three, four million subscribers, uh, like, um, and th they share their stuff. And they said, like, every time I smile on the thumbnail, it gets less clicks. People click on a set face, 
like way more and i'm like really wow. so and we came in and we did if you look at my thumbnails you know like i would be like owing scorning did not let me film and it's like dimitri made a set for boom 2000 views in the first like 24 hours when usually it's 1000 and we start doing it for every single video and views almost double click through ratio almost double i would never thought about it but it took me like to go to the conference have someone on stage explain it show their experience why they do what they do and i have like five or six things that i learned like that came back like uh, another thing was reaction videos the easiest videos to uh, to make just take a news clip or whatever react to it like what you, do. you don't always have to create a video sometimes you can react and tell the story and what do you think about it and i'm like that's so easy start doing that cannot beat those videos now those videos beat all my like i'm i'm competing with myself like that reaction video on the news story how many people were there um like thousand Fifteen hundred, all YouTubers. So, like that video will be competing with this video, and probably will beat this this interview. It's crazy, but you need to get out of your bubble. You you have to get out of what you think because you will not come up with it. You need that aha moments, and conferences is where you get a lot of aha moments. Yeah. You go there, and like two days, you're gonna. For me, two days at a conference equals to like six months, maybe a year in college. Like everything is so packed. And those are how moments they truly help you. Yeah, conferences create the belief and they show the, the 30,000 foot view. Um, I'm sure that inadvertently I've inspired a lot of people to, to come out of their shell and to create content awesome. with my videos. And like, um, what was I going to say? And like, you, like you're telling me you're in your bubble. I'm in my bubble. The other day when you had that kid doing the inspection around the house, I'm like, I got to do one of them videos. People ask me, like, they, I just assume people know this, but they don't. They don't, they don't know about how to detect windows. They don't know about discontinued shingles. So when are you going to start doing it? I got to do it, man. You're going to do it today? Go. Like, I'll give you a videographer. <laughs> let's, go, let's, let's go. Let's go. I got an inspection today to do. Biggest mistake sales people make? Oh. Uh, biggest sales... Um, people, for some reason, think that they're not talking to a human being. They think they're just rehearsing a script or a pitch. And like I said before in the last video, we, we are in the human contact business. Uh, so what I found in a large part of my success is being genuine and just warts and all, putting it out there. Hey, listen, like if someone wants to collect, uh, if someone wants to keep the deductible, okay, cool, I'm human, like, sounds like by your decisions and action taking, you're trying to keep a little bit of money. How much money are you trying to keep? I'll ask them. What, how much money are you trying to keep? Because maybe we can work this out the legal way and not this way. Let me give you some other options. I can't break the law, but what are you trying? Like, it sounds, I'm human. I have financial issues I've had in the past. How, how can I help you? How can we resolve this? Because you know, we did business this far. I got you this result. We're still doing business. Tell me what's on your mind. Um, so just being genuine and compassionate to other people's needs. And also just having the... People still don't believe in what we do. Even though they're in this industry and they knock doors or they don't, they don't knock doors. We're in sales. And some people don't realize that we're in sales in... When you're in sales, you got to believe in your product or service. You have to walk with posture knowing that you have a tremendous amount of value to offer. And don't be scared about what they think or what they're going to say. They're not the expert. I see a lot of people, well, they said no. Well, why didn't you take another no or another no or another no? If you believe in so, I tell this to everybody. All these network marketers, they got this face cream, they got this and that. If you felt great, if you felt confident about what you're doing, you go door to door and sell that. And make it happen. So having some posture in what you believe in, knowing that you're a salesman, you're there to help people, not just to sell somebody. You're there to solve a problem. Um, that and not to be and not to be so uh, inhuman. You got to connect with people. Uh, John C. Maxwell. I got to meet him and spend some time with him. Over 88 books on leadership. Uh, one of them was called uh, "Everyone Communicates, Few Connect." Once you find that connection with people, it becomes more and more easier because you're just being yourself. 
I don't even talk about roofing or insurance when I talk to people most of the time. It just comes up organically. Love it. Let's finish uh, with, um, as always, give advice to the business owner and to the sales reps. Two advices, one to the business owner, one to the sales rep in the industry. Business owners, um, develop a brand, create some content. If you're not going to do it, find one of your leaders or influencers to do it um, and keep investing in your You're people. You're a door knocker. Why do you need a brand as a door knocker? Um, well, it's just to show this side of life, right? Not everybody door knocks, but they can watch me and see what my life is like. That's all. It's just... Why does uh, Mike Rowe interview all them people that were different jobs? People are interested in other people. Like you said, most people are consumers, not creators. Um, for the salesmen, invest in your personal development. Invest in going to these conferences. Not all of them. I will say there's some that they're just all fluff and there's no content. If I don't come out of your uh, conference with actionable steps or stuff that inspired me or flipped the switch, then I probably won't be back. Networking is great, and some of these events are strictly networking. One of the largest events, you'll see people there that you don't see at any, all of them, and that's wonderful, but the content, like, uh, go to these conferences, invest in yourself, invest in your team, um, invest in yourself because it shows and it matters. Love it. Glad to have you back, man. Guys, comment below if you have any questions for Ben. Um, come meet him at the Roofing Process Conference. Myself, we're going to put an amazing event. I promise you, you will never be the same if you do come. Uh, quick announcement, I bought a sauna. It's a, a trailer sauna, 7 by 12. So we take an RV from here all the way there with a the sauna on the back. Nice. It's a Roofing Insights mobile uh, wellness center. unit. <laughs> yes, center. And uh, every morning... We, we're, we do take our health seriously every morning and evening. You guys can hit the sauna with us. You're going to love it. Sauna and cold plunge combination, you will never be the same.